as we come down to the end of each one of these ages, there is not going to be but a third or two people saved. All right, Don. That's right. Now you're talking about Jesus jumping down through the sky. And all of these folks that claim to be saved, it's going to be a different story. Yeah. Do you understand? Now, you're going to have to be responsible for your own self. Okay. Okay. You're going to have to quit depending on these hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just like Dr. Tran read to you about that as Messiah was in his day. Hey, do you understand? Now, he got crucified. <coughs> of course, that was prophetic. Yeah. For telling them the truth. Now, 1969, you're up against it. Mm -hmm. Those of you that want to know the truth mm -hmm. and know it just like it is, you've simply got to stop listening to these ignorant folks. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, see? Yeah. You've got to do some. This is your soul. Yes. <laughs> nobody has no right. Nobody on earth has no right. To dictate to you about your soul. That's true. <laughs> you see? And clicks and movements of all kinds, paternal and ecclesiastical. See? Or group theory mm -hmm. is no good. I would like to s <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan branch. This is a school. It is not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were in, we, the Southfield branch was established in 1997. The deans of the Southfield branch is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the president is Dr. Edward Ewell. In this school, we use the true, correct, 
and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia <coughs> will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show to you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses, atop of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. 
The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes this pattern. Our primary constitutional aims and objectives of the school are, first is to help you to find and to know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, caste, sex, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of time and ages. <laughs> Seventh, to discern and to avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of, of iniquity on earth through the dispensations and time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is to speak the truth. And at this time, we will have a prayer given by Dr. Pedro Dominguez, followed by scripture reading, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, which will be read by Dr. Shirley Nelson. Good morning, class. Uh, Good morning. Hope everyone is in good spirits, and uh, as we come together, let us bow our hearts and our minds and our souls to give reverence and pray, and give, say a prayer to Yahweh Elohim, and ask Him. Uh, 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 that uh, as we gather here, we lay aside our cares and uh, our our um, pain of the world, so that we can pay attention what's being said on the floor by the speaker and that you uh, allow the speaker to have a, a, a understanding, a better, a good understanding that he may convey all, all that uh, may be said to, to the audience, to the people. And that I pray, hallelujah. hallelujah. class. Scripture this morning is 1 Kings 18. Yes. Okay. 18th chapter. I have it here. Sorry. 
I'll be reading. Here, let me have it here. Yeah, what are we doing with this one? I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Traina, the Scripture Research Association, and reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That is 1 King chapter 18. And it came to pass after many days that the word of Yahweh came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared Yahweh greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of Yahweh, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land until all fountains of water and unto all brooks, peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beast. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him and fell on his face and said, Aren't thou that my master, Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go tell thy master, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As Yahweh thy Elohim liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my master have not sent to seek thee, and when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou, may, thou, thou sayest, excuse me, go tell that ma excuse me, and now thou sayest, go tell thy master, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of Yahweh shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear Yahweh from my youth. Was it not told my master what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of Yahweh, how I hid a hundred men of Yahweh's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy master, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As Yahweh of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the com commandments of Yahweh, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the sacred poles, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Yahweh be Elohim, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of Yahweh, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, 
and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your idol and I will call on the name of Yahweh. And the one that answereth by fire, let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many. And call on the name of your idol, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Bel from morning even unto noon, saying, O Bel, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a mighty one. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he's on a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they, cried, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lassets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past and they raved on until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of Yahweh that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of Yahweh came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Yahweh. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Yahweh, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art Elohim in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Yahweh, hear me that this people may know that thou art Yahweh Elohim, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, Yahweh, he is the Elohim. Yahweh, he is the Elohim. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Go, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Jezreel. 
And the power of Yahweh was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jeril. I have read 1 Kings. Hallelujah. I would like to once again say good morning to the class. And we welcome everyone out to this morning's class. I would like to I would like to acknowledge a first time visitor we have visiting with us that's with Southfield Branch, El Elano Griddle. Griddle. Griddle, excuse me. We welcome you. We sincerely hope you will enjoy the lecture. And we would like to ask the assembly to please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. And for our first speaker, we're happy to call on Dr. Lauren Lewis. I'd like to say good morning to the class. Um, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Um, and I'd um, like to welcome our visitor. I believe you've been on our Zoom, but uh, I'd like to welcome you in person. You get to see up close and personal the charts that you see on, on Zoom. Uh, and when you get the opportunity after class, maybe come up here and uh, take a look at these charts. Um, but as it says in the moderation, that this teaching <clears throat> is a product of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And he said not to believe him just because he said that he had this vision, but to make him prove it until you are, we are satisfied. Um, and it's a little different than what you hear out in the world. Typically, religious leaders will tell you um, <clears throat> what it is that you're supposed to know about God. And in any type of delving into questions, usually <laughs> renders an answer that that's God's business, definitely if they don't know how to explain it, um, as well as um, either telling you something that is erroneous or that is false. <clears throat> Um, and I think it was Dr. Domus last Sunday that gave a wonderful, wonderful analogy. You know, I'm telling you, we, we've heard these things over and over and over again, you know, but sometimes you'll get analogies that just hit differently, you know. And he talked about just the intimacy between man and woman, right? <clears throat> And then coming into a true knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, just back here, I'm all over the place. When this man, Adam, they talked about he knew his wife, right? And how she conceived, right? He talked about this man, Adam. So what is it that he knew? When they talked about that knowing right back then, it was an intimate relationship, right? So then we're coming down here into a knowledge and understanding of our true husband and father. Yahweh is an intimate relationship, should be spiritually. So you use that analogy, you know, if you're intimate with your mate, you're not calling out another name. Now that hit differently. That's woo. <laughs> you know, because we all can go personal, like, yeah, you better I double dog dare you not to, right? And that's a carnal way of thinking, right? So now you have Yahweh who is the true father and husband and power and potentate of us all, right? And you're going to call him whatever you want to call him. That's not how that goes, right. right? He's the true husband then. So now, because we know Yahweh is the true husband, and our scripture lesson just 
greatly and you can grab it and hold it. And someone probably go back there and help uh, April. <laughs> but uh, greatly depicts how Yahweh is not giving any honor or glory of this name to anyone else. Any God, any deity, any imagination, any concept. I'm telling <laughs> I watch uh, Survivor. And this person says on there, they're atheists, right? They're atheists. But it was something that happened in this game that was so miraculous that they had to say, now, I know it had to be a God. He said, but I'm an atheist. <laughs> now, how do you say that? You see him saying, you can't cause your heart to beat. You can't cause yourself to breathe. What I mean is, yes, you can hold your breath. But see, if you try to hold your breath too long, you're going to eventually have to gasp for that breath of life or that air or that Yahweh, right? You're going to eventually have to do that, which says that you have no control of it on your own, just like you have no control of your heart on your own, right? All breath, all life, all power comes from Yahweh. And he depicted that through what we read in that scripture in 1 Kings, all right? Before you read that, go over and get uh, John 14 and 26. But like I had mentioned, that this teaching, and I think at some point in time I used to say maybe this school was a product of a divine vision. And Yahweh is more perfectly showing me it's this teaching is a product of a divine vision because it doesn't matter if you're in a brick or mortar. It's the teaching, which is the gospel of the kingdom right. of Yahshua the Messiah. This teaching is a product of divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Now, that's not shouldn't be anything foreign. That's how Yahweh has always dealt with his creature or his creation. Creation, excuse me. He's always talked to man in visions and in revelations. So if you can get a couple examples there, give me our proverbs. Uh, oh, before you do that. I'm sorry. And, and if you guys know what the scriptures are, call them out for them. I want um, that the scriptures of no private interpretations. Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Um, also, let me get Proverbs 29, 18, Numbers 13. Um, Is that say, what did I say? Numbers 13? Oh, child. Numbers 12, <laughs> number 12 is 6. Um, what else is it? Which other one am I thinking? Visions. If y'all know it, I didn't call it, throw it out. <laughs> Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 and 2, yes. Um, that is as well. But if you can get the, uh, get me, first get me uh, Holy Man Spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, then get me John 14, 26. Mm. One and twenty. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Now, out here in the world, that's what you got. Go pull up on YouTube. You put in one particular word, and you'll get everybody's thought and concept on whatever topic you put out here, specifically religion. Now, it's telling you here in the scriptures that no, read it again for me. First, mm -hmm. know no, this first. Right. Right. Read on. That no prophecy of the scripture. No prophecy. Anybody gonna tell you something about these scriptures? Mm -hmm. Read on. Is of any private interpretation. It can't come from here. Your own private interpretation. That's right. What your concept and your opinion is. It does not come from there. Mm -hmm. Right. Read on. For the prophecy came not in old time mm -hmm. by the will of man. See this prophecy. That's the thing that's so pretty. It's not by the will of man. That's right. It is by the will of Yahweh. Read on. Mm -hmm. But holy men of Yahweh spake. But listen, he says, now this prophecy is not by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh. See, that's key. Holy men of Yahweh, because there's a scripture that talks about the many going to come saying this and that, right. right? But it's saying holy men of Yahweh spake what? As they were moved by the As they were moved Spirit. by their own imagination. Mm -hmm. Their own concept. Their own opinion. As they were spake, or they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Right. John 14, 26, please. Mm -hmm. That's John 14 and 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter. Now this is, now I just said that this scripture that you're about to read and you're trying to read and know about, 
I have a friend that thinks, you know, I, I, you know, I've read and I've been on my quest and, and, and search to find God. And I, and I know that's what led me is I found, listen, <laughs> you can't find him. He got to find you. He got to come and get you. That's right. And it is done through a way of maybe a friend, a co-worker. I got two assistants that are heavily into God, right? And now when they're professing Lord God and Jesus Christ, what do you think I'm saying? Oh, yeah, the creator. No, I'm giving them Yahshua, right. right? So it can even be in that, in the people you work with, in the people that you know, right? Yahweh will allow you to say, hey. Did you know that my name is Yahweh? And you may have heard that name before, but now I'm about to tell you why it's so important to say that name, right? Because with that name, it's attributes, it's characteristics. Like I tell my employees all the time, your attitude is your disposition. Your disposition shows your characteristics. Your characteristics show your character. So how your attitude is tells me exactly who you are, right? So this name, right here, has certain attributes, has certain characteristics. It's showing forth a certain type of power. We just read that in First Kings. You see him saying Balaam. Oh, my God. It's so much. You're going to have to get that definition, too. And, and, I, and listen, we can't. That Yahweh told me to get these scriptures. I'm telling you, because I literally, this is what I said to <laughs> April on the back. I said, he called out Shirley to read the scripture lesson. I said, you know what that means, right? So it's either you or me. And she says, you. <laughs> and so then I said, well, right before I said, well, let me wait to go to the restroom because if it's you, then I have to, you know, read. And then it was me. And I'm like, dang. <laughs> you know, just thought about, I wasn't, this is, this is not planned. I said, all that to say, this is not like the church world where we prepare a sermon. If Yahweh said it in the scripture, now about that scripture being no a private interpretation, you about to read right here that this Holy Spirit, who they said, had to give you. That, those men, they spake by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that what we just read? Now we about to read in John what this Holy Spirit is and what this Holy Spirit does, right? Now it makes sense why it ain't just one person can say it. It ain't just you that's teaching. It's the Holy Spirit that's the teacher, right? So that's why you ain't got to come up with a script. If the Holy Spirit be in you, then he going to do the teaching. Uh, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, All right. which is the Holy Spirit. Now, isn't this written in red letter in your Bible? Mm-hmm. Right. Elena, Alina or Alana? Is, is that how you pronounce your name? Alana. Alana. Is your letter red letter? Okay. All right. So what does red letter typically tell us? Him as who? The Messiah, right? So that's the Messiah whom the world erroneously calls Jesus Christ, which we know properly and appropriately is Yahshua, right? This is the Messiah speaking. Now he's telling, this is, oh, go to 14 and 1, just real quick. I'll just read down just real quick and try to read a little bit quickly. Now he's talking to his disciples, right? Read right here, John 14 and 1. 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in Yahweh, believe also See, in me. <laughs> Listen, he's preparing them. It's not what they told you out in the world that they came and killed Jesus. He's preparing them. He told them, I'm coming in to do a certain thing. Mm-hmm. So why do you think he's telling them, let not your heart be troubled? Because mm-hmm. he told them, I got to come in here to die. Then he goes in to say, but let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh, who is invisible, you can't mm-hmm. see, believe also in me. Read on. Mm-hmm. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father Yahweh's house are many mansions. Now we say that Yahweh has nine divine attributes, being wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. That these are not just his only attributes, but these are his nine divine attributes. He's not uh, just has or possesses wisdom, but he is wisdom itself. He doesn't have intelligence or he's not just smart but he is intelligence itself. He is love itself. That's why 1 Corinthians, uh, what's that? 13 chapter says, if you have not love, you are as a tinkling brass, all right? If you have not Yahweh, you are nothing. That's what it's talking about. He is that love. He is that foundation. He is that power. We just saw it in 1 Kings. He is that strength. And he is that justice. Right. There's nothing justice. Isn't that right, Dr. Brazil? In this world, unless it's coming through Yahshua. Right. 
Listen, I go every day. I'm dealing with this. She said it not too long ago. She says, when that war was in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Said so that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Said so he was cast into the earth. And she said, not like in the middle of the earth of what people think. You said when they was casting demonic spirits out of bodies, I mean out of bodies, she said they weren't casting them out of rocks. That's right. They were casting them out of people, right. out of bodies, right? You see what I'm saying? Now we're looking, it's not just the people anymore. You see, me and my mom was just talking about this movie that Netflix just dropped. If you ain't watched it, get it. You want to know what it's called, y'all? Yeah. Leave the world behind. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, Yashua, good. Listen, I go through my day I'm like, you funny, Yashua. Leave the world behind. This whole time coming up to here, you remember all the apocalypse into the world movies were zombies, right? Mm -hmm. And so we were, and we knew the spiritual representation of that. Dead men walking, right? So we understood that. But then when you thought about it, you said, listen, we know we're not going to wake up and see no zombies out here chomping on us like it was, you know, in The Walking Dead or World War Z. You know what this movie based off of? A cyber attack. I said, if they're going to sink our battleship, that's how they're going to do it. <laughs> And listen, they did everything. They had control over the electric cars, the cell phones. The man says, look, I can't do nothing without my cell phone. No GPS. Look, I thought about that. I said, what did we do before cell phones? I live in commerce. I turned all the way home on Thursday to go back and get my cell phone. And I was halfway at work. I said, what's wrong with you? What would you, would you have, would your world have ended? Because the bad part is I have two cell phones. <laughs> one is work and one is personal. I left the personal at home. I said, I could have, you know, just dealt with work. Nope. That's how much we hooked on. I said, but see, personal calls, I got to do one. See, I'm so much of a slave that it knocks your common sense out. You don't turn and spend all this extra gas to go get a phone, and you're with the phone. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. You know what I'm saying? So that movie made sense. Yahweh is showing us exactly where we're at. All these things are the cares of the world that consumes us. And he's saying to his sons, leave the world behind. He's saying to Lauren, listen, I saw, when I saw that, I was like, whoa, you boy. He know how to get me. I love Apocalypse End of the World movies. Sometimes I walk in the, work, in, in the grocery store, I'm like, dang, I wish the zombie apocalypse would hit. <laughs> There's just too many people here. You know, so I like that thing, and that's exactly what it came to. Tell me, just leave this stuff, everything that you so consumed over, that you lose sleep over, that you get yourself upset over. And the same Yahweh that was back there helping Elijah, you see what I'm saying? It's the same Yahweh today that's helping us. It's the same. He had, well, he's not lacking any power, right? Come in, and every adverse, uh, and adversity I had, I was telling my mother about it at work, came in and parted it right on out the way. People saying, well, it's whatever Lauren says. Right. Whatever Lauren says. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't know how to. You have to speak up and give it to a door. Here. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to do it. Oh, no, I see how it's done, Dory. Sorry about that. Okay, so over here we just read that the holy men spake, uh, uh, men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now we're over here in John 14 and 26. Said all that to say that it's not about our agenda. We haven't planned what we're going to say, but it's the Holy Spirit that is the teacher. Now this is John 14 and 1, right? Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, read, read there 14 and 1 for me. I'm sorry. Uh huh. Read on. Believe in Yahweh. Believe also in me. Right. In my Father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, I must go to prepare so a place for you. So we're talking about these many mansions that He has, right? Mm -hmm. Now He's saying, I must go to prepare a place for you. What is what is Yahshua talking about? Read on. 
And if I go and prepare a place mm-hmm. for you, I will come again and receive you so unto myself. Listen, in the church world, they still wait for him to come. Mm-hmm. He says, if I go, and we know that he died on the cross. If I go, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. Mm-hmm. Read on. That where I am, there ye may be also. Now, where was he? This is Yahshua the Messiah speaking, whom the world erroneously or ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Now, he says, now, where I am, he says, I'm going to go away and prepare a place. That where I am, mm-hmm. you may be also. That where I am, isn't that <laughs> present tense? Where I am. Where am I? I'm standing right here on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. He's telling them that where I am, there ye may be also. Read on. Mm -hmm. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Right. He says, and whether I go, and the way ye know. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, he started this scripture off saying, let not your heart be troubled if you believe in Yahweh, who is the Father. Mm -hmm. Believe also in me. Because he says in multiple other places, and if you know where it at, grab it and hold it, that my father and I are one. Mm-hmm. So we learn by the, can't go through it all. And we've gone through it a couple times on Zoom class, I believe, so that you've been able to hear about this unity of the spirit. Mm-hmm. That this same Yahshua, the Messiah, who came out and was fulfilling everything that was written in the law and the prophets, when it's talking about Yahweh, that's Yahweh in his high and lofty, pure spirit state as the father. When he comes in the creation manifested in the flesh for salvation, he's Yahshua. This is none other than Yahweh the father stepped into the flesh. Just like you have a baby, takes on shape and form, is con- excuse me, is abstract in the beginning. Then it takes on shape and form like Yahweh Elohim took on shape and form and was seen in visions and in revelations. And then that self-same baby that was abstract, that sperm fluid in that egg, and then took on shape and form within the mother's womb, later on nine months is manifested in the flesh. This is this way. You operate that way. I've had a child. Every woman that's had a child has operated that way. Every person born was born that way. (laughs) I don't even care if you got same-sex marriages. They got to go and get an egg and sperm. Period. I don't care if you a test tube, baby. They mix you in the test tube and they incubate you in a woman. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to change. It will never change. That is what you call law. That's what you call fact. That's Yahweh, right? We are that way because he is that way. So now Yahshua is none other but the father in physical form operating out salvation. That's who he is. So that's why that name Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation or Yahweh is the deliverer. See, he's deliverance, he's salvation. In this form, I have to always go back to this. Y'all remember that movie, uh, Bruce Almighty? It's a real good movie. You remember in the beginning of Bruce Almighty when Jim Carrey gets the invitation, remember he was all stressed out, and he gets the invitation to meet at this warehouse. Mm-hmm. He comes to this warehouse, and who does he see? Morgan Freeman, right? But Morgan Freeman's on the bottom floor in the janitor stuff cleaning, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So then he says, I'm here for this port, man. I'm here to come in this. I don't know if this time he knew it was God or what. But he says, I'm here for this appointment. He says, oh, well, you got to go up. Basically, you got to go up. So now he has to be elevated. Right. So he goes up and what does he see? Morgan Freeman in a white suit. Right. Yahweh <clears throat> took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim and out forth came the days of creation. Right. And he worked. So he put on his work clothes. Right. And created the days of creation. And it talks about in Moses' vision here. He says that how. Oh, God. Talked about how he had hands and feet and a body. And on the children of Israel, what did it say? He laid not his hand, right? So you see this right here. You see him saying he's more, what's the word I'm looking for, you guys? 
He's concealed. Very good word. That's why I put under my eyes this morning so I didn't have my dark circles. <laughs> concealed, right? It's hiding something, right? <clears throat> so that's here, right? And then later in John's vision, he sees that this same pattern that's covered up, now it's open. And then he sees this self-same element now in garments of beauty and glory, or he's glorified. Right? So now you got to have this movie. It didn't give you a different Morgan Freeman. It didn't give you Morgan Freeman and Denzel. It gave you Morgan Freeman. And two different manifestations or states of existence. Now Yahweh has three states of existence, two manifestations. Manifestation is to be made known. So here in pure spirit, you can't understand him. He's abstract. He is Spirit, we cannot discern spirit with our five senses, right? So he had to take on shape and form so that we could understand him. So in this shape and form, seen in visions and revelations, he's making himself known in that form, right? So there's, that's one manifestation. Then he makes himself known physically. That's another manifestation. So he has three states of existence, two areas that he made himself known. You understand? It's simple. You see, I'm telling you, it's not hard. When Yahweh said one, two, three, A, B, C, that even a child can catch on, watch that movie. See? And it was a child and it kept saying, see, y'all just won't listen to me. <laughs> Yahweh, good, boy. I tell you, he's good. His story is good. You see what I'm saying? You want, you want drama and suspense and love and murder? You know, read some of these scriptures. You want deliverance? I'm telling you, but Yahshua, <clears throat> Yahweh is the power, right? And that's what we read in our scripture lesson. So, read down so I can get it down, okay? So, where are you at in John 14, real quick? Read on down. Thomas saith unto him, Master, we know not I'm sorry, so read a verse up. Read a verse up for me. I want to make this one point here. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, mm -hmm. that where I am, there ye may be also. So now where was he? You see, now he already told them. He says, like, if you believe in Yahweh, believe in me, because him and his father are one, right? And he says that you, I'm going to prepare a place. And where I am, this is the Messiah, who we're about to find out is the comforter, teacher, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He is saying that I'm going to prepare a place, and where I am, there you disciples, and the ones I choose, where be also. So where was he? He was the Holy Spirit in a physical body, <coughs> right? So he's telling them, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit in a physical body, right? <clears throat> Read on down. And whether I go, you know, not and. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Right. Thomas saith unto him, Master, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Right. Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. We have that right here on this chart. This is in here in our apostasy plate here. Mm -hmm. And this is on the chart, which is called the chart on the pattern and a plan of salvation, or what we also call, a.k.a., the elementary chart. Mm -hmm. When you think about elementary, isn't that the basics, your foundation? Mm -hmm. Right? I look at all this math that my daughter is bringing in, and it's just a roundabout way to do adding and subtraction. <laughs> That's it. See, because adding and subtraction is the foundation to your algebra, your geometry, your trigonometry. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Your one plus one. Is that's all it is. All multiplication is adding. Mm -hmm. All division is is subtracting. Mm -hmm. You see, just in a different form, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so this is this elementary chart, and in this apostasy plate here, right? Apostasy isn't that the turning away, mm -hmm. right? Of from what you formerly believe, right? All right. So this is apostasy, and in this apostasy plate, you see sex. Creeds, cults, vain philosophers, Babylon or Christian doom, the mark of the beast, false prophets, deceivers, denominations, anti-Messiah, man-made preachers, skeptics, atheists, agnostics, infidels, and false teachers, false science, theor theoretical opinions, religion merchants, Satan ministers, and harlots. 
And then over here, it shows that that Pope and, uh, of Rome, how he wears that hat on his head, which is called the Vicar of the Sun, or what he's called the Vicar of the Son of God, right? Mm -hmm. But he wears this hat on his uh, uh, head. Wasn't that the martyr, or what's it called? Mitre. Mitre, right? And on that mitre, they have these uh, vicarious philidae, right? Mm -hmm. That's on the mitre, it's written there. And when you take the numeral uno, uh, numeral miracle of each of these Roman numerals, they come to the total of 666. I, I, I recommend you come up here and take a look at this chart yeah. when you get a chance. That's on the Pope of Rome, the Mark of the Beast. Listen, um, listen, me and Dorian's favorite movie, Damien, the Omen. Ho, ho, he, ho, you know that movie, right? Mark of the Beast, what was they very strongly in? That Roman Catholic Church, right? It's showing right there, Yahweh already put the stamp in it, right? And in this apostasy plate, he says exactly what it said here in the scripture. The way, the truth, <coughs> and the life. He says, how are we going to know the way, Yahweh? How are we, how we going to know the way, Yahshua? We don't know the way. We don't know how to go. And he tells them, I am the way, That's the right. truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Not what the world says. There's many ways, many truths. Stand in your truth. Stand on business. It's your truth. Mm -mm. There is something that's universally true and a lie. You got right. no way of getting around that. You see, we cannot barter with Yahshua. That's where it's at right now. You are either just like, oh, my gosh. Just like with that prophet's veil. I'm going to leave that for somebody else to touch. But he basically, and this was back here with the children of Israel after Yahweh brought them up out of here. And they built this coat and calf, and Moses came down. What did he have to say to them? All on Yahweh's side, he made a line of division, mm -hmm. right? And those that weren't on Yahweh's side, didn't that earth open up and swallow them? Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Divide. <laughs> That's right, Hera. That's right. Because Yahweh said it's going to be a remnant. It's not a whole masses the understanding that's going to be in this knowledge, right? So where it's at right now, when Yahweh says in that scripture, if you love father and mother more than me, what he's saying is, is that the truth is the truth. And if you can't handle the truth, right, because of what someone thinks about you, or if your family will disown you, you see what I'm saying? It's a place in this talk about then you're not, oh, my gosh, I can't remember. You can't remember scriptures up here. I'm a scripture reader. Can't remember it at all. But see, but you're not even worthy to be called a son. You see, Yahweh did back here through Yahshua the Messiah. He died for us. Real quick, and I, I know that bell was ringing. 26 verse. Now, I, wonder, I got all that to say about this, about us not planning. It's not our story. I don't know how to say it any other way. It is not our story. It is his story. This is Yahweh's story. Can't nobody listen. And can't nobody tell my story as good as me. That's right. Right? So why am I going to leave you to tell my story? Someone was sitting up here talking about, well, Lauren said, I'm like, who, who is they? And who said, <laughs> Lauren said, don't say I said nothing. That's why I tell my boys, oh, don't say I said anything. You know what I'm saying? If you want to know, come ask me. That's what I tell them. You want to know? Well, such and such. Well, that was your fault because I told you to come ask me. That's how I tell them. Nope. So if you, since you want to go off of what such and such told you, then you go and t do what such and such told you to do to you. <laughs> Type of person, boss I am. But anyway, <clears throat> but anyway, Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah, in this form, came in with a particular purpose and mission. So over here in John 14, 26, and I'll be down. But the Comforter. But the Comforter which is the Holy Spirit. Now, this is still Yahshua talking. It's still in red letter. Now, he's saying, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that gave inspiration to these men that wrote this Bible and spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. This comforter, he is the Holy Spirit. Read on. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father who? Oh. The Father Yahweh, mm -hmm. that's the Father, will send in my name. Now, Yahweh is the Father. And then you have Yahshua coming as the Son or salvation. You see that he's taking on that male portion of the Father's name. 
So he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whom the Father, Yahweh, is going to send in my name, Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Read on. Shall teach you all things. He. Who's he? He, the comforter. He, the Holy Spirit. He, who is Yahshua, is going to teach you all things. Read on. And bring all things to your remembrance. And bring all things, because you're going to forget, mm -hmm. to your remembrance. Read on. Whatsoever I have said unto whatsoever you. Whatsoever I... <laughs> if he go back and forth between that third and first, whatsoever I have said unto you. You see what I'm saying? Now, this comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, Yahweh, send in the name, he's going to teach. That's why it's not our words. He is the teacher. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you are going to say, I don't care if you can't run these charts and you can't do, I can't do numericals. There's some people who can really do numericals. There's people who can do that, agents of disposition. I can't do that, right? But whatever it is that Yahweh's giving you to do, if you're up here and you're speaking, confessing to Yahweh, and it does not confirm or coincide with what Moses talks about, and what John talked about, and what Dr. Kinley talked about through this vision. You were just like those preachers, there ain't one out of there, a thief and a robber. And you cannot come in that way, right? Mm -hmm. You have to come through Yahshua the Messiah, who is the container for salvation, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> or he has the container of love, but he is yeah. salvation. And with that, I say thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lewis. And for our next speaker, we're happy to call on Dr. Lisa Austin. to say good morning to the class good morning. and um, I truly enjoyed the previous speaker um, it's definitely always a pleasure to be allowed to come to class to be allowed to understand the things that have been shared by this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder and Dean Emeritus Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And if we um, are honest and fair, without this vision, and if somebody can get that, I think it was probably already being held about um, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. Because we all have to know Yahweh for who he is. And uh, I'm not sure who the, oh, the moderator, but nonetheless, the first aim is to help you find mm -hmm. and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. This has existed in terms of in the physical body because we now know that the Holy Spirit has risen and um, on the day of atonement and the day of Pentecost, he poured out the Holy Spirit. And that's what came to my mind, the last thing she said, and that's where I wanna go as well, is this Holy Spirit, how do we as Gentiles Heathens, not a natural Jew, but a natural brute beast. How do we get this opportunity to have this Holy Spirit not only teach us, but be in us, which is our hope of glory, our only hope of glory? So if you can read for me about um, prophetic Proverbs vision. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there's no prophetic vision. Prophetic, if somebody can get that, uh, mm -hmm. the definition. Because mm -hmm. prophetic is foretelling. And I think she said it, or the vision has said it, and she repeated it. False prophets. Mm. What's prophetic? But finish that in the scripture, please. Where there's no prophetic vision, the people perish. Perish. We know what perish. When your food perish, it's spoiled. It's no good. Prophetic. This is prophetic from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary Online of, relating to, or characteristics of a prophet or prophecy. She talked about characteristics, because these are Yahweh's attributes similar to what we would have in terms of our disposition, our attitude, or our characteristics. 
read. Foretelling events. Foretelling events. See, this vision is, this divine vision and revelation is foretelling of events. That's how, um, hopefully I say it correctly, how we were told that Dr. Kinley was able to put the pattern on certain world, world events right. and prophesize what would happen. Six day war, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Because a prophetic vision is telling something to come. Is there anything else about prophecy? Predictive. Predictive. Mm -hmm. All right. So we just learned about this Holy Spirit who is the teacher. Right. And we want to know how we can get this Holy Spirit through faith. So if you can get Ephesians 2 and 18, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about prophetic. Mm -hmm. See, this is a timetable of Yahweh's history, because it's his story. So you start in the beginning, and the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, it was an angelic creation, and the physical creation was pulled or drawn right out of that. And someone on the Zoom, and we talk about it all the time, how we come from a natural standpoint. You know, that uh, egg and that sperm that comes together in that cloud. Cloud-like substance. Now, why do they refer to that as a cloudy substance? They refer to your brain as it looks like a cloud. These things are not haphazardly. It's because of Yahweh and it's his story. So you talk about this creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. So the physical creation was pulled or drawn right out of this angelic creation. The first age was the age of conscience. In Adam all died. We were dead on arrival. We were dead on arrival. And then there's a dispensation that goes with every age. And right after the age of consciousness, then there was the post-Diluvian age or after the flood. And there's all these things that were established for the children of Israel to be able to worship Yahweh for that time and that time only and for those individuals only. And then you have this next age, which is what we're in, which is the present kingdom age, spiritual kingdom on earth, spiritual assembly, body of Yahshua, Holy Spirit through faith, Ephesians 2 and 18. That's Ephesians 2 and 18. For through him, we both have access. Now, by who one is the both? That's the Jew and the Gentile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read. We both have access by one spirit unto the Father. One spirit. See, Yahweh is spirit. It's not more than one spirit. Now, there are two mysteries. And um, I'm not sure. Because he actually, he just be feeding me all the time. So I could have been on the Zoom for our North Chicago. It could have been Seoul. It could have been Lansing. It, could, it was pointed out that this vision, these arrows. Now, I've seen these. They is going to a revelation or to a delusion. So he running it all. But there is one spirit, which is Yahweh, and it's two manifestations. It's the spirit or the mystery of Yahweh or righteousness or the mystery of iniquity. Read in Ephesians 2 and 18. Therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. You know, once you get, you talked about that intimacy or that relationship that Dr. Domus was talking about um, previous class. See, once you know and you have a relationship which we all have an inseparable relationship with our creator, whether you're conscious of it or not. So it's an inseparable relationship. But once you know, read. Now therefore, you are no longer, I'm sorry, you are no more strangers and foreigners. We no longer are a stranger or a foreigner. And really, he wasn't strange to us, or how should I say it? Let me see. He was strange to us because we hadn't heard these things before. But now once the teacher, which is the Holy Spirit, has set you down and given you the lesson, which is, <laughs> I'm going to just say it like this, a play on words, a lesson on this son, because Lucifer's son too, and more, that's a song, I love it, at the end of Lance and they play it. He came to give life more abundantly. Yeah. 
abundantly. You know what I'm saying? So we want less of this and more of this. And the lesson is to learn of him. Read. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the sons. And of the household of Yahweh. In the household of Yahweh, there ain't no better place to be That's than right. in him. Right. To, and he giving you the access to everything. Now, this Holy Spirit through faith. Now, people have their own definitions and thinking. And we don't even have to do that. The Bible tell you what eternal life is. It also tell you what faith is. Right. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope, stop right there for a minute. What does the moderation tell us? The Yahweh is the source, the substance, mm -hmm. the limits, the bounds of all things. Now what's faith? Faith is the substance so of things Yahweh. hoped for. So that's Yahweh. You got to have something to do with Yahweh because he's the substance. You know, and I was just speaking to my son. I said, it says, seek ye the kingdom first. Right. Like you read, it said, know this first. Right. We learn, I ain't good in math either, but I do know this. What? One, two, three. <laughs> I know right. one, two, three. I know one, two, three. <laughs> and sometimes I know one, two, three in the lottery. So I would just say one, two, three. <laughs> but I do know it's showing forth the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. I ain't giving out no numbers, but you know what? He always come through because all things come from him. So see, he in the kingdom. <laughs> this the real money right here, though. And I remember, because my foundation is in Yahshua, but, you know, I like to, I'm pretty straightforward. I came and was brought in by Yahweh in the Detroit class. So that's my foundation. But I have now learned this is my foundation, right. this knowledge. So it don't matter. Brick and mortar. Like he said, gold and silver, have I not? You know, it don't matter where you go. As long as where you go, he lead you and he in you. But my point of saying that is, I remember the former dean saying one time, at the end of this age, you're going to need not only the Holy Spirit, but you're going to need some money, too. And that's true. You can't. I walk out the house and I swear I spend $150. I just get on the porch. I'd be like, I need to stay in the house. It's too much. You need money. But we now know because we in a spiritual age, spiritual kingdom on earth, what's the real money? Do you have some wisdom? Do you know how to conduct yourself in a wise manner when things be presented? Do you have a little bit of knowledge and intelligence? Mm. Most certainly do you have some love. Right. And not natural love, but love of the Messiah. Where, right. what did he say? The foxes have holes, but the son of man don't have a place to lay his head. But he care about everything and everybody. And that's all that matter. Do you have some beauty? Not physical. It's fading daily. It's fading daily. So it got to be something better. What it say over there? Beautiful are the feet of those. I don't know what it say. I'm going to say that preach the gospel, but I don't know. Is that what it say? Yeah, See, when it's in you, it's in you. I just, I, that's what it is. That's what the real beauty is. Our sister, the attorney, what justice, if it come, it's only coming from Yahweh. People be thinking like, why did they get away with that? Or why did they get caught? Because Yahweh said they was going to get away with it. Because guess what? They're going to get caught down there. They just ain't get caught there because they still got a lesson to learn. Less of him and more of abundance. Do you have some power? Do you have some strength? But if here's the beauty. This the money, but it's just like a bank. They got to give you the loan. They got to approve it. Your, my kids used to be like, just put the card in the thing. I said, y'all think your kids too. This don't mean this money. It got to be something the in there the in order for the card to work. It took them a while to learn that. And I mean, like two weeks ago, they just learned it. I had to restate it. That don't mean that. Which account you want me to use? Neither, <laughs> you know. But this is the money in all series. How we spend this and how you spend your time and how you spend your focus and what you do should all be to the glory of Yahweh. And no matter what, you are operating according to this pattern. Because he's the pattern. Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. The moderation says nothing, absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
Nothing. So let's talk about this Holy Spirit through faith that we have access to. You know, spiritual assembly, body of Yahshua. Can you also go to Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 and Colossians 1 and 24? That's Ephesians 1 and 22. 22 and 23. Yes, ma'am. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. See, the he's assembly. the head. Mm -hmm. We make up the body. That's what it says, spiritual assembly, body of Yahshua. That is not physical body of Yahshua. It's not the physical lamb that the children of Israel had to uh, partake of and kill it and put it on the strike the lintel and the side post and the basin. That's showing forth this lamb, mm -hmm. the real lamb that need to be fully consumed and that's accepting and understanding and being obedient to what thus saith Yahweh through his son Yahshua the Messiah. Finish there in Ephesians please. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the assembly. Can which you stop it, there? Now that would seem foreign, strange, if we didn't know, if you put it carnal. But we know that when they saw Elohim, the children of Israel, what did they say? He had feet mm -hmm. and he had a body. So we like, okay, you can see the pattern repeating. He got a feet and we got feet and we got a body. But not that specially prepared body of Yahshua the Messiah, because child tell you, sometimes you hurt your foot, you be like, ah, we couldn't take nothing. But you can take it all, you can withstand it all, you can endure it all with that lamb in you. Because he your advocate and access. Read for me in Ephesians. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. He filleth all in all. And you empty if you ain't got them in you. That's right. Colossians 1 and 24. Colossians 1 and 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly. See, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth to him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And you know, I have conversations with people about religion and spiritual type things. Because I always say at the end of the day, why are you going? What's your purpose of going? Now, we were told, Dr. Kinley said, we need a good contrast to understand anything. I was raised Roman Catholic. I went to private school pretty much all my life. They put me in public school one year. Ooh, baby, they had to put me back. Because see, some people, let me just say this. This is 100% erroneous and wrong pertaining to your heavenly father, pertaining to salvation, pertaining to why he created the creation and what is really going on in the scriptures. Some of us need rules and regulation. So for me, morality was a good thing for me to have. But it's no salvation in morality. So the people, some who are in church, are sincere in regards to how they interact with people and what they do and what they think is right. But they sincerely wrong. If you think those things, go save your soul. Go cleanse your soul. Go get you into heaven so to speak, when we've learned from this prophetic, foretelling, divine vision and revelation that hell and or heaven are not physical locations. It's a state of mind. You can be in hell right here on earth. Most people are. You can be in heaven right here on earth. Lots of us are. And I'm grateful for that because if it wasn't for the teacher who would teach you all things, which is the same Holy Spirit, who we have access to the Father through, we would be lost. Men most miserable. Not to know that it ain't just me going to work because I got to go. I need my insurance. And I love what I do. He gave me a job, what I do. And it helps people. So that's a good thing because that's really him. Because some days I, don't be, I need help myself most days. But to know from this prophetic vision that 
That's a means to an end. I thought ends to a mean. One of them, you know, the world got so many sayings. Here's my point. That money is okay, and that's what we need. But this the real money. Because when the leave the world behind that movie, and the world go down, and whatever, them, them them credit cards and all of that stuff not gonna do nothing pertaining to your inner man, right. the one that's gonna go on forever. Right. Now, we just looking good. And we grateful that Yahweh have seen fit for us to still be able to survive and endure in this life. But we understand what the real life is. And it's not this one. This is a temporary existence. Get for me the definition of a tabernacle. Because see, this tabernacle, which Elohim is the archetype original pattern of the universe, it shows forth the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. But it also shows up the makeup of a man. Because we are made in his image and likeness. We have a head cavity, a chest cavity, and an abdominal region. And it's correlating to, again, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. Or in the tabernacle that the children of Israel had to build, that Moses was shown in the mount to build, had a most holy place, a holy place and a court round about. And it's beautiful to realize the stuff that they say, they sincere about it, be good. You're made in the image of God. You're his child. You don't know, but you don't know what that means. And when you see that candy as a kid at the candy store, you'd be like, well, God told me to get it and I'm gonna take it. I don't know how I'm made in his image and likeness, but you come here and been taught by the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher who will teach you all things, that the way you made in his image and likeness is, I don't know where it's at, but first of all, you body, soul, and spirit, okay? That's first and foremost. Then there's a reason why white, black, Puerto Rican, everybody all got a head. Nobody coming out different, ain't nobody birthed, no monkeys or none of that. But we have these three things to show forth the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And there's a reason why your heart is where it is and your bladder is where it is and how your food go and the substance fits and your lungs. And I mean, it's beautiful. And that is the love of a real, true parent. And we don't need no Lord and ladies to cover me because I'm female. Yahweh cover it all. He is the father and mother of us all. I'm going to end here. This is what I just heard. So most people know I work for a Catholic organization. Before the pandemic, they had a Bible that was handwritten calligraphy from uh, Genesis to Revelations. I'm going to say Exodus. Because that's how we taught. See, they didn't taught us which one is first, but I'm going to say it that way. And... Um, Pre-pandemic, you couldn't touch it. You know, we all came around and looked down, like, oh, whatever. It's beautiful, though. Beautiful. So now they brought it back out. And I guess since the pandemic is over, now the case is open, and they do this Friday turning of the page. I'm like, okay, it's beautiful. Turn another page. So I go down the first time, because they invited leadership, and I'm looking, and I said, hmm. I see some Hebrew written. It, had, it was a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm looking for the I don't know much, but I'm looking for this because I do know this. So the, preach, the priest come up to me, and I, he said, it's beautiful. I said, it is. I said, but I'm looking for the Tetragrammaton. He was like, mm. He said, um, well, they're not going to have that. They're not going to have Yahweh. He said, but um, right here, it's been translated for Lord. I said, oh, well, no, that's a mistranslation. So I use this money, and I remember my real money, and they ain't got me here to be preaching about Yahshua, but I preach them how I act and what I do and how I conduct myself. So that's preaching, but I won't go, go too far. But what they had was, he said, you're not going to see that on here. At the top, they had Jesus. But then they had the Hebrew right there. I was like, ain't no J. So I don't know what this is. But what I did know from learning this, if you started with Jesus at the top and translated it 
and went all the way down because they had everybody, Ruth and all the different people in the Bible and their names in Hebrew. But when he said this, you're not going to find the Tetragrammaton on here because this is the lineage of Christ. Now, he said Christ, but at the top it said Jesus. I said, no, nah, you're not going to find the lineage of Yahweh not starting at Christ. That's what I'm thinking because I'm like, that's wrong. Here's the point, people. Yahshua is not Jesus. It's not like, I don't see her here. Um, Alexis Hamilton said, her friend said, I just want to find a church that's using Yahweh. You're not going to find that not in righteousness. It's not the same. This is a different doctrine. This is the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. It's not a version. There's a difference between a version and a vision. And we have been brought to a vision, Habakkuk. We want to write it, we want to read it, and we want to live it. That's for real. This is not something that's just pretty pictures on the wall or just something to read and learn about. This is our life because our life is hid in Yahshua the Messiah. So if you got any type of life, this is where it better be coming from. The source, the substance, the limits, the bounds of all things. Read that for me in Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me. See, that's me. what I be doing. I wake up and I watch to see what he going to say to me. For real. Because sometimes, listen, yesterday my son wanted to do something. I said, you don't need to do that. I'm going to do it anyway. Go on about your business. <laughs> Five minutes later, he came back in the house. My car ain't start. I told you Yahweh said no. <laughs> but guess what? He's the savior. Yeah. So even when you be like, I'm going to do it anyway, he'll make you slip, fall, something happen, and he save you from yourself. Yes. That's what he do. And then at some point, like a good parent, he hoping you just get it. <laughs> you get it, and then you wake up and you say, what will you have me do today? Yes. You know what I'm saying? What will you have me do today to glorify you? In my body, that's yours. Yes. <laughs> Read that for me in Habakkuk. I'm sorry, I think that's I will it. stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I will prove. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision. See, the vision has been written. Mm -hmm. Them that can read, read. Them that have an ear can hear, read. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain. It's plain table. and these are tables. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three. But you know what? Everybody don't pass math. They don't. <laughs> I was everybody. I didn't pass math. When I was in college, I was like, what can I take that will... Give me graduated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was really the real, that was the mystery behind the mystery. I just want to get done. I don't want to, it took me five years that they say it's supposed to take four, but I now, and I felt bad in a way, because four denotes a change. I'm supposed to win from four years in high school to four years in college and change. But it took me five years and I was like, that's Pentecost, I'm free. I ain't got to do nothing else. It's a jubilee. And I know people who've been going back and going back and going back. I'm still riding on that 1990 two bashers that Yahweh saw fit for me to get. Because my thing always being I'm not against education and we should be the best that we should be because we got the best of the best by this knowledge. But school ain't for everybody. It's not. And at some point you come to an understanding that we got that access that this vision has been written and that you know what you just want to find your place in Yahweh's purpose. We don't have our own we had a deportment in previous things, but we want to find our place. Where do we fit in his story so that we can ask things according to his will? Yes. You won't be disappointed when you're asking for something to be like, right. he'd be like, my child, you work at McDonald's. You cannot get a Mercedes truck. <laughs> Legally and lawfully. But you know what? Maybe if I work hard and I come on time and you show me how to manifest some love and beauty and justice and intelligence in what I'm doing, next thing you know, like they say in the movies, then I'll be on the fries. Then next thing you know, you might be on the cashier. And then next thing you know, you might be a branch manager of McDonald's. <laughs> and now you pulling up the McDonald's in your Mercedes. You know what I'm saying? Because it went with 
Right. What go with it? Right. You got to know when to hold them, when to fold them. But it's all according to him, and you got to have an ear to hear. Is that it over in Habakkuk? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, third verse. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. See, it's an appointed time for everything. Yahweh has <coughs> ages and dispensations within his purpose. And I love it because I guess I didn't know this, but I didn't know it, but I knew it, but I didn't, I heard, had to hear it, that there are three physical ages in which Yahweh created. That go right to the pattern. You don't think about the, you do, but you don't, the one before that's not physical and the one to come, it's not physical. It just makes so much sense, you know? The three that are physical gave us three chances. That's how I look at it. He gave us three opportunities, really way more than that if you look at your everyday life, but three opportunities to learn of him in this physical state of existence. I haven't forgotten I asked for tabernacle. But this physical state of existence or in your tabernacle where he should be dwelling within you like he did here on the Day of Atonement when the Shekinah, when he forgave you for the things, or forgave the children of Israel, let me say it right, for the things. But I remember I had a rough year, and I didn't even realize it was the Day of Atonement. And I was like, Yahweh, please, why my TV go shh? <laughs> he and everything, and he can talk to you, you got to have an ear to hear. Some people, I remember one time you preached about something that happened over in the Middle we East, and people talked about, that was so silly. That didn't go to that. But we just looked at the war of Israel, and Dr. Brazil was talking about, now how many days you think it was that they start releasing? Oh, yeah. Everything, you can't, it, nothing escapes the pattern. So it's not like I'm here and Yahweh here. No, you want him and you. And it's, it's, it's an intimacy thing. It's a true marriage, it's a true family. Read Tabernacle for me and I have my seat. This is Tabernacle from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary Online. A house of worship. See, you got to worship him in spirit and truth in your tabernacle. Just told you right here, man made in the image of Elohim by the tabernacle, by the pattern of the tabernacle. See how you can't read or how I can read? Of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And you have the pattern or the tabernacle. Man by the pattern, the tabernacle of man. So I'm not making this up. We are referred to as a tabernacle. Read. A tent sanctuary used by the Israelites didn't, during the Exodus. Didn't he come to the tent when um, they went up in the mount and Joshua? At the bottom where he. Mm -hmm. right. mm, thank you. See, the tent, that's who you want in there. Aaron and Moses is just like Dr. Kinley in terms of what Yahweh used that vessel to guide the people and tell them what he wanted them. But you see right there, Yahshua the right there. Where you talk about the cloud came down near the burning bush. The real tent. The real tent. This one. Yeah, that's just an illustration. That's the illustration. Okay, yeah. they all the tent. Yeah. The tent. They all pictorial <laughs> illustrations of the Bible. <laughs> What's the tent? Um, a dwelling place. A dwelling place. A temporary shelter. Temporary shelter for the soul, because this right. is not where yes, we're coming. This is a round yeah, trip. Yeah. We're moving into the Sabbath, the age of. The kingdom age, let me read it right. Immortality, new earth state, kingdom of immortality. Because he raised immortal or quickening spirit. Is there anything else yeah. for that? To take up temporary residence. We only here for a minute. <laughs> and a minute be long, because one day when Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years, what? a minute is long. Yeah. Read. To inhabit, a physical body. to inhabit a physical body. So it's a true statement from Webster and, of course, from this prophetic vision that we are a temporary shelter or we are a tabernacle moving through the creation, which abides within Yahweh or eternity. And we want to remain in the cloud, hopefully in righteousness, right. with understanding and being able to just glorify Yahweh in all that we do to the pattern in thought, word, and deed. Don't just think and then you do something else. Don't just do it, but you said something else. This got to be complete because you whole with that whole lamb in you. And I'm just grateful to have an opportunity to come and learn and really to have anything to say because Lisa don't have nothing to say. But this is, if he give me anything to talk about, that's why I won't go back to school. I'd be like, I ain't read all that I need to read about this. I can't go to nobody, U of M, Oakland, no more. 
five years and out. Hallelujah. Thank you. that. And for our next speaker, we're happy to call on the Dean of the Southfield um, School, Dr. Marvin Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I want to start by saying that I enjoyed the previous speakers. And I'm also going to make an, uh, a pronouncement that I often do when I get here. And that is simply this, that what you heard from these two individuals in great detail that they went into, they knew absolutely nothing about that before they came and sat in one of these classes. As simple as that. Me personally, I had no idea about the name of Yahweh, never heard it in my life. And when I first heard it, it didn't mean that much to me. It was just another name. But I had to come to realize from attending these classes that names do have power. They always have had. Joe Biden, that name has power. <laughs> See, in my house, Sharon Lewis names have power. <laughs> I ain't stupid. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's just bringing it down here. That's why these people are talking in implying and building and going into great detail about the name of your creator, which the world knows that the name of your creator is Yahweh. See, that his divine title. Now, what makes that a divine title? Because that's the title that Yahweh chose for himself. We didn't give him that title like Allah. And I'm not picking on people. You understand? We're not picking on religions. Because every last one of us was wrong, too, when we started out. Every last one of us. See, and the purpose of us preaching this gospel as often as we can is to have the same thing happen to somebody else that happened to us, to get straightened out. That's all, to get straightened out, to know what you're talking about. And what's more important than that to know what the Lord is talking about that you called him. What's he talking about when he says things in the Bible? See, and you scratch your head and say, well, I don't know about that part, but I know, uh, I know he saved me. How did he save you? How do you know you're saved? Now, here's how most of us never knew we were going to be saved, John. Because we were afraid of death. <laughs> See? We thought that was the end of us. See, we thought that, when well, I'm dead, I'm gone. You've heard people say this, well, when I'm dead, I'm gone, and that's all there is to it, so I'm going to have my party now. <laughs> see, I'm going to do my thing now. But see, we come down here to understand, see, that Yahweh, our creator, is eternal. See, having no beginning and no end. So now if that's the case, then that means your existence, since Yahweh brought you into existence as an individual, never intended for you to stay in this earth plane, in this flush, forever. It's a temporary state of existence. So what Yahweh purpose is that when he brought forth this creation, and I'm going to try to make it simple. This is the only thing I knew. I would have just rather stayed in my seat, but you, so you, sometimes you're obligated to admit to people that you believe this. And you can't always do that sitting down. When Yahweh reveals something to you, you just can't keep it to yourself. See, even when you're ridiculed for it. You just have to swallow it and keep right on preaching. See, that's why we're here. That's why we rent this building, so that you might come to know something about your creator as he really is and actually exists. 
And what's the advantage of having that? Just so you can be right? Just so I can show you that I know more than you? No, that's not the purpose. The purpose is, see, is that we may ultimately be able to deal with Yahweh in eternity. In this glorified spiritual state of existence. Now that's heaven. Heaven is up here. It's not up there. See, that's a mis misgiving that we had. We thought it was the place we were going. And listen, if you're lucky, if you come and just listen to what Yahweh's telling you and taking his witnesses into consideration because Yahweh has never told you anything that he couldn't prove to you in this creation. See, you say, well, how do I know Jesus rose? Wasn't so-called Jesus whose real name is Yahshua Messiah, wasn't that the son of Yahweh? Wasn't he the son of Yahweh? You admit you agreed to that, didn't you? Well, then how do you know he rose from the dead? Don't you see that sun up there in the sky? And it rises every day. Now, I came to learn that from this vision of Revelation. And that was a witness for me. He said, well, you ain't no stopping that. Even when it's cloudy. You know that sun's shining somewhere. That's right. Every day. See, that's your witness. Give me Romans 1, 19 to 20. Romans. See, I don't have no deep esoteric secrets to reveal to you. I can't tell you how to hit the lottery. <laughs> See, I can't tell you how to impress your boss and get a raise. But I can tell you what Yahweh has manifested through people that'll save your soul for an eternity. Because that's how your soul, that's how long your soul lasts. See, it'll last for an eternity, so it'll either be in glorification or damnation. Now, here's the, here's the situation now. Once you're able to sit in front of this vision of Revelation, and you hear the things that these pre previous speech Speaker said, and they went about to prove them. See, according to Yahweh's will, what he said. Now, Yahweh has often said that, give me that scripture where, well, read Romans 1 and 19 first, please. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Now, hold it. That which may be known of Yahweh. Now, I had to come down here before I could even realize that I could know something about God as he really was and actually exists. Because what I was told in my previous religious organizations and affiliations was, well, that's God's business. Just leave it alone. Say, and if when I ask a question, say, well, uh, what's, who's the Lord? Well, that's God. Okay, well, then who is God? Well, that's the Lord. Well, that don't make sense. Just leave it alone. That's God's business. I was literally told that physically to my face by somebody that was supposed to be a higher up in religion and knew something about God. Then I come down here and I get a full explanation, which made sense to me and made sense to my kids when they were sitting here. I'm talking about my kids when they sat in this class. That's where they learned about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. They didn't learn it from me and my wife. They had to sit here and hear it. All three of my kids are in class, and I'm not bragging. But I want you to know this. Me and Sharon didn't have anything to do with that. That wasn't us. We were trying to understand it ourselves. Let alone bring them up in it. And it came times when they would tell us something about this gospel we didn't know. So Yahweh can do miracles. And don't count yourself out if you need one. And we all need one at one time or another. 
Say, and now listen. The fact that you're sitting here and you're taking notes and you understand just one thing, that's a miracle. <laughs> that you can understand that the name is Yahweh and that Yahweh gave you a witness that that's his name. And that witness is simply inhale and exhale. Why? Well, I'm not Buddha's my guy. Yeah. Why? And I'm not trying to be funny and down talk people, but these are facts, folks. Right. Yeah. And these are facts that me personally, I came out of the Episcopal Church. And I thought I was a halfway smart person. Wasn't much you could tell me, as a matter of fact. I thought I was smart till I met Ed and got seven degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and when he first came to class, I tell this sometimes, it's funny. Every time he came to class, he had a stack of books <laughs> under his arm. Bibles, 20 different Bibles, uh, philosophized books and stuff. And he would sit in class and the dean, uh, Eugene Brazil, used to preach the gospel. And Ed would be like, well, what about this here so-and-so in the uh, apocalypse of the annihilators? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Brazil would go, oh, okay, yeah, I understand, I see that. But now we have to look at this, see. Now Yahweh, <laughs> now Yahweh is spirit. Next time he'd come to class, he'd have one less book. <laughs> Third or fourth time he came to class, he actually started taking notes. And then when he took notes, what that told me was, Oh, I'm going to go check that stuff out when I leave here. Just because you tell it to me, I ain't going to make me just go for it. That's the way you ought to be. You should be. Nobody taught me to be like that when I was in the world. They said, now you just take it for what I say, see, and then deal with it. See, but down here, we don't tell you that. See, we don't tell you, say, listen, don't take a word we say until we prove it to your satisfaction. Not prove it to your neighbor. See, until you're satisfied with it. Till we give you irrefutable proof. And listen, that name Yahweh is, you can't refute it. Why? Because you're a witness against yourself. I don't believe that. Get a stethoscope. Put it on your chest. Yahweh. Yahweh. It better be beaten like that. <laughs> if it ain't, you got problems. See? So even in your heart and in your mind and in your breath, you call on Yahweh and you say, I don't believe that name. You don't have to. Yahweh going to get his glory whether you think he should have it or not. And listen. Sooner or later, you are going to have to reconcile with the point that Yahweh is the creator's name. And listen, who does not like to be called by their name? What's your name? Dwan? How about I call you Bobo? You look like a Bobo to me. You happy with that? <laughs> You're not going to be happy with that. That makes no sense. You just call somebody whatever you want to call them. Do you know people done got killed for doing that? <laughs> and you think it's all right. Not like that. Finish reading where I was at. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Now that being which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Who's that? Who is the them? Mm -hmm. Who is the them? Everybody he created. You are a witness against yourself. The previous speaker talked about this threefold makeup of the pattern. See, the most holy place, the holy place, and the court that went around about. See, and it was an excellent lecture. If you weren't here last Sunday, there was some, just some basic fundamental stuff That's right. that overpowered your intellect. <laughs> <laughs> you just say, wow, it's that simple? 
How come if it was that simple, how come I wasn't smart enough to think of that? See? But see, there's only one teacher down here. And the teacher down here only has one name. And that name is Yahshua. And that's the only teacher. And that's the only person we want to hear from either. See, we don't, want to, we don't care about your family. Half the time we don't care about our own. <laughs> so we, we just want to hear the purpose of Yahweh. And that's what I'm going to, a few more minutes, I'm going to just cover some of the basic things that drew me in, that caused me to think and to investigate and to ask some questions. Because when I first got here, when I first started coming to this class, I thought I was too intelligent to have to ask a question. I really, I did. And then Yahweh had to show me that if you listen, the only stupid question is one that doesn't get asked. <laughs> that's the only question that's stupid. And guess what? When you ask, a, when you keep that question to yourself, it never gets answered. It never gets answered. So you have to say, but listen, I'm going to just go through this real quick. Because the previous speakers went over the importance of the name Yahweh. And now, whatever you do or say or go, your name is important to you and to everybody that uses it. And I'll tell you something else that goes along with your name. Once someone gets to know you, is your character gets attached to your name. You see, you understand what I'm saying? So now what happens is, is that calls me and you, once we know somebody's name and we know that person, see, is then we can have a vision of that purpose, that person, can't we? See, now we're talking about visions and revelations. People, I don't believe in no visions and revelations. But now if I mention your other cousin's name, Jeremy, you don't have to be looking at him to recognize him, do you? Oh, that picture comes right in your mind. You have a vision of that person associated with the name. So that's just an example of the power that's in a name. See? Because you can be, you can literally be resurrected from your dead, ignorant state just by a name. Will enlighten you, improve your understanding, make you smarter just by knowing and understanding someone's name or any name. That's what we're talking about when we talk about this name Yahweh. And see, and this Elohim, it's a title. Now, it's a divine title. Now, why does that make it divine? We didn't give him that title. He chose it for himself. So now, if he's a deity or divine deity and he took that name for himself, that makes it divine, not made up. And then you have Yahshua the Messiah, which is Yahweh. What that means there is Yahweh this creator Yahweh manifested in the flesh. See, Yahshua. Yahweh, Shua in Hebrew means deliverance or salvation. So this name Yahshua means something. It means Yahweh is salvation. It's not just a title like God. A God of what? A God for what? A God to who? See, that's why everybody's got different ones. Now, the reality is that this, folks, God came from imaginations. You just decided who you wanted to be your God. So now this stuff that's going on in this world now over in the Middle East, it's all because serving false deities One side thinks they're right. The other side thinks they're right. And why do they think that? Because they made up their own rules. That's what the world has done with religion. Made up our own rules. 
That's what they did. So the rules on one side is this. This is our rules about our creator. He wants us to do this and do that and to make us righteous so we can go to heaven and have 12 virgins. You can't hardly live with one spouse. And you want 12? Sometimes that's a struggle. Then they ain't going to stop you from getting married to her. You're going to run down there as fast as you can. <laughs> But you see the conflict there? So you have a conflict because everybody thinks they're right. Now listen, we come down here and I want you to get the scripture where it talks about, he says, Yahweh declares, I'm Yahweh, and that's in Isaiah, I believe. I'm Yahweh and there is none else. Thank you. See, so that, that case, the case is closed there, folks. See, because he did, did just listen. That's no more than what you would do. My kids are here, but they, you better respect me. Why? Because I'm your father, and you're the children. Ain't that the way you feel? You're doggone right you feel like that. <laughs> Except she's excluded. <laughs> but, She's going to exclude herself anyhow. Anyhow, but that's why. See, because you determined that. Read that for me, please. That's Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am ill and there is none else. Now, remember the former things of old. What former things of old? Because everything I have done, starting right down here with delivering the children from Egypt, I've done in my name. I've done it to show my power. I didn't do it to please Isaiah down here. I didn't do these events down here just so one of those prophets would have a story to tell. I did it to manifest my power so that the world could understand that the whole universe bows down to me. Now, that's the kind of power we're talking about. And that's the kind of Elohim, Yahweh, we're talking about serving. We're talking about serving somebody that can do something for us. See, deliver us from death, hell, and the grave in a state of ignorance. See, we don't know nothing. Don't even know God's name. And so stupid that we thought God was a name. Now, that takes some stupidity. It takes some help. It takes some help to be like that. And like the previous speaker talked about, see, there's two mysteries. See, the mystery of a righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. See, and listen, when you look at them, you can't tell the difference when you're looking at them. You have to know and understand their attributes. That's what's the difference. And if, you don't, if you're going to identify them, you have to be able to tell the difference between their attributes. And that's why these charts are here like this. A picture's worth a thousand words. See, you would have to come here thousands of times to hear me verbally say, give you this picture. It would take me two hours just to make you understand a tenth of it. You understand? So that's why you have pictures here. That's why the Apostle Paul, and most of us didn't know that. I didn't know it before I got it. That's why the Apostle Paul used charts. That's right. That's right. That's right. And there's scripture for that, too. That's right. See? So tell them, tell them when they come back, bring them parchments with you. Why? Because a parchment's worth a thousand words. These charts are worth a thousand words words, a picture. I know I'm out of time now. See this chart here? This is called the Moses chart because you have Moses on it here. This is Moses' story. And now listen, I had to come down here to understand that nobody knew Yahweh's name until he gave it to Moses. That ain't what it says in my Bible. It starts out with, in the beginning, the Lord said, well, the Lord's not a name. And Genesis, 
I'm going to tell you something else. This is something I learned when I came to this school. I'm going to tell you something else. Genesis is not the first book of the Bible. Well, yes, it is. Every Bible I look at has got Genesis first. Through the vision that the founder of this school had, he pointed out simply that Moses in the book of Exodus was called up on the top of Mount Sinai and shown the vision of Yahweh's beginning of the creation right. in a vision and a revelation. Now this happened after, after the Exodus. So you had to have an Exodus before you could have a Genesis because he showed Moses the Genesis in this vision and revelation. That was in Exodus after the generation had come about, after Genesis had even come about. Now, I learned that in this school. See, all the research I did and all the scholars I talked to, see, none of them could explain that to me. I got my pet answer. That's God's business. Well, now it's mine and yours. <laughs> now it's our business because now we know what kind of Elohim we're serving. See, we're serving an Elohim that has the ability to elevate your understanding to a spiritual level. And it'll be so beneficial to you because you'll do what Yahweh wants you to do. Worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what we're after down here is the truth. So I enjoyed class. New person, I'm glad you were able to come. Uh, it's always heartwarming to see a new person here and uh, you, you have you a lot of people are praying for you uh, that, that's what we do uh, down here when we see a new person come in and we just wish that they have the uh, glorification that we have to be a part of this great vision and revelation and to be able to know your creator's name just like you want people to know your real name Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. We enjoyed that. That concludes our lecture for this morning's class. Um, we hold classes here every. We hold classes here every Tuesday. We hold classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Zoom. You're welcome to attend the Zoom meetings, and we hold classes on Sunday from 11 to 1 in this building. Um, the secretary has an announcement to make, uh, but I just, just one second, I just wanted to say that next week, the 17th, we have class here. And then the week, the two weeks after that okay, go ahead. are closed okay. due to the building is closed due to the holiday. And next week we're... I guess Dr. Right. Uh, Nelson. We'll have a business meeting. We'll have a business meeting in this room uh, on the 17th of December, immediately after class. I think we had this since last before, and an hour or less. So I will ask that you all make sure you're in attendance and uh, you are allowed to go and see what we have to offer. Okay, Dr. Nelson. I didn't, I didn't hear you, Dr.
again, we thank everyone for coming out to uh, today's class. We want to extend a warm welcome for our visitor to please return and study with us. If not in person, then definitely online on the Zoom classes. We are so glad to have you here. So this time we will have doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. If everyone can stand, please. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, hallelujah. hallelujah.